texting them. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Mute them, Ginger. Yeah, I'm texting. Madam <coughs> President. Director Hector. Absent. Director McGraw. Here. Director Roth. Here. Director Ricketts. Here. Director Setzer. Here. Here. Uh, we do have a quorum, eight out of the nine. And then I will call the meeting to order. Again, I will ask you to mute your phone. Because someone has not muted their phone and you're interfering with everyone hearing the meeting. I have muted him yet. Right. He's, he's, he's driving. He's working on getting to be able to mute. You've been muted. To unmute yourself, press star six. Thank you. I think that's him muting us, and now he'll yes, unmute. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So you need the star six again to unmute us. Star six to unmute us. I think you need to unmute us. Good morning, everyone. I call this meeting to order as we have a quorum for those of you who didn't hear. Two members of the board, oh, one member of the board, and Hector is not present as he is ill with a back problem. So I call this meeting to order. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to move that we add two agenda items to the board meeting. The first one we'd like to add is discussion and possible approval of a petition that was received uh, from a few members of uh, the membership to add uh, some items to the September 18th meeting. Is there any objection to adding that to the? The second one is Vesta would like to do a proposal on the refurbishing of the men's and ladies' rooms in the South Club. Is there any objection to adding that to the agenda? Would that be again? No. Okay, well, the other one today, was it? And we have to approve a new petition or reject the petition file. Well, we didn't vote. We have to vote. Today. The agenda item. And I would make a motion to approve the July 10th, 2020 draft director board meeting. And I have a motion for it. So move. And a second. Second. Any objection? In the minutes of the July 10th, 2020, minutes are approved. And Ginger, I'm going to let you go first this morning. Are you ready? I am now. really out there using the facilities and it's a lot more than you might think it is. 
In the fitness center, we did uh, just under 5,000 visits for August, which 20% of that was at the South Club. Fitness cl uh, water classes are very well attended with 500 users in August. And we now have 55 videos posted so people who still aren't comfortable coming into the facilities can work out at home. In the spa and salon usage for August, we had sales and merchandise, uh, service and merchandise sales of just shy of 18,500, which was a 13% decrease over the prior year, same month, which is still extraordinary performance considering the COVID conditions we're under. On food and beverage, we served 3,500 <coughs> patrons in August. 77% of those were dine-in, and with total sales of 48,800, 65% <coughs> of that was dine-in. 28% of sales was in alcohol, and I don't blame them. For, uh, for our projects, we have the Nantucket Backflow Preventer. That has been completed. We're just waiting for the bollard installation. That's pending. That's just the bollards they put around to protect the, the backflow preventer. The main clubhouse roof membrane project has been completed. The theater dressing room remodeling project is in progress. We do have the counters installed now, a uh, partial furniture delivery. Electrical permit has been approved by the county and the electrician is scheduled. So it's uh, hopefully we'll be all up and running by the time we can uh, maybe all get back to having some entertainment in the theater. The South Club Pool Expansion Research Project is still in progress. Revisions have been made. Uh, I think we're on version five now. The next step will be a virtual or in-person meeting with the RFEC and any board members who would like to attend with the landscape architect to review the current scope for that project. And finally, the men's and ladies locker room project renovation is pending final funding approval later on in the meeting today by the board. On special event information, Matthew and his team would like to you all to know we have an outdoor concert series that be is September 8th. This is a first for us. It is reservation only. All attendees are required to stay distanced. Masks are re recommended but not mandatory since it is an outside event. But if we can do this safely and successfully, more events will be added. More events will be added in the future. Note to all attendees to that function, you must heed the directions of staff with regard to safety protocols. Also with special event information, we have ongoing fraud prevention and education that's going to be offered in conjunction with Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Kings Point South Bay Hospital will be partnering for an Ask the CEO format for Kings Point residents. And then finally, table tennis will begin their play here in the 2020 in the next few weeks. On tram services, we had a 9% increase in mileage over the prior month and a 13% increase in ridership with 1,488 riders. So that's just all evidence people are feeling more comfortable to get out and about. In gate security, we had a 13% increase of phone calls to the gate over the prior month and passes uh, issued actually were a decrease and remember so many of the passes were for food delivery so I think a lot you know there's a lot less food deliveries coming in and people going out the patrol the security patrol drove almost 2,500 miles looking for things that go bump in the night while you all are sleeping and we had 33 incident reports of note we had a visitor stating to security they were a DoorDash employee the driver was unable to show proper ID or provide a delivery address when questioned, and he had to leave. He returned a second time, saying he was just following a vehicle in front of him for delivery, who ironically was just happened to be a, a Vesta employee, so they knew he was lying. <laughs> the driver was again told to leave. When the driver arrived a third time, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office was notified. The driver immediately left, exiting right through the stoplight and HCSO was given all the information involving the incident. So just kudos to the staff there for heads up and, and uh, watching those guys as they're coming through. Also 
a new number for you. During the month of August, we had over 5,270 card swipes at the golf cart gate entrance, averaging 107 golf cart entries daily. So that is a very well utilized entry point. Reminder to all outdoor clubs, they should continue to be diligent and adhere to social distancing. COVID cases are decreasing, but but we're not out of the woods yet. We continue to receive requests to lessen the restrictions, but please hang in there a bit longer. We wanna make sure before we, we add any more things on that, that we think we can do them safely and comfortably for everybody. To that note, I did receive a very positive letter. This is very nice. Bert McDaniel wrote and said, on behalf of myself and my wife, Madeline, we wish to thank you all for what you have done to keep the residents of Kings Point as safe as humanly possible, safe from the coronavirus. Staff and housekeepers have done a beautiful job keeping it clean and sanitized. Please give them a thank you for us. It's things like this that make Kings Point a wonderful place to live. The staff and workers are the reason this is the perfect place to live. Words cannot ex express how we feel. And I just wanted to read this because it's a nice positive note in, uh, in such a, a negative news world these days. And uh, on that note, Kings Point community has been awarded a silver award designation for the Tampa Bay Times Best of the Best Awards in the community category. So congratulations to Kings Point on being such a wonderful place to live. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend safely. As always, stay apart, wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay hydrated. Is Officer Mary here for a reason? Uh, Jeff, did you have anything to note for the board? No, he just just in case you had questions on the previous incident. No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mr. Wilkie from First Service. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody on the phone. The First Service Management Report for September. Uh, just a quick note that all Federation directors presently sitting on the board are current owners of the condominium parcels or the single family dwellings in their district. And uh, this was verified by the public information in the Hillsborough County Records as of August 31st, 2020. Uh, just all the year and financials are still available to all unit owners upon request. So just uh, give a quick email to your CAM or give the front office a call and we'll make sure a copy is ready for you for pickup or we can email it over to you. As well as the, uh, the year-end tax returns have just been returned to our office and we sent out a note to all the association presidents to come down and sign these tax, uh, tax returns from the accounting firm and that uh, if they have any questions, um, we can get with that accountant to uh, clear anything up, but they are ready. We have, most of them have been signed. I think we only have about 25% left that need to be signed, so um, uh, very quick turnaround there. Administration operations. For First Service Lobby, we have been open since July. Um, everything has been going pretty smoothly. We appreciate everybody's uh, respect and uh, cooperation as uh, they follow the directional arrows and keep the hand sanitized and, uh, and, and keep the uh, maximum occupancy in the lobby down. We are still utilizing the drop box outside of the parking lot and right in front of the First Service office. So any, any monthly payments, any leases, um, any any requests or information, you can feel free to drop it in there. That is checked multiple times a day um, if you don't feel comfortable coming inside. But uh, we do welcome you to, to pop inside the lobby for anything that you need. Just a quick rundown on some of the administration tasks that were completed in the month of August. There were 58 unit transfers and 29 leases completed. So this is a, a big increase in transfers or unit sales over the last couple months. So it's a good sign there that uh, more sales are going through. <coughs> Your information and document requests, there were 37 total. We had 680 pest control appointments made. There were about 780 walk-ins for the month. We did 275 notary services, 42, 42 orientations, and we have currently um, 71 out of 113 associations using our AVID um, accounts payable system. Um, so that is up from about 30 for two months ago. So um, those presidents that are on here to your CAM should have reached out to you and will continue to reach out to you about jumping on Abbott to help uh, just help with your accounts payable and improving your invoices each month. 
alteration forms that were submitted to our office, there was 94 for the month. We did 58 violations, and the CAM self-processed over 200 uh, invoices. We also have uh, drawn up 12 project contracts, so those include any of your painting, uh, paving, or roofing projects. And just run up a quick contract for you guys. There'll be more to come on that as well. <coughs> Uh, so just a quick update, we did send out a notification about the alteration forms, the request for alteration forms. Those are for each association's unit owners to ask their boards to um, request an alteration. So we did send that out. We have new copies in the lobby. It's been updated on the website. So if any questions, please let us know. Um, but again, that's kind of a similar process that the owner will fill it out for board approval and be, be reviewed by the first service CAMS. Um, just another inter-office inter policy, we've started uh, doing a monthly CAM meeting with myself. Um, so all the CAMs meet with me each month, as well as our staff meetings have started back up. We had them pause for a while with just the transition and COVID. Insurance items. So again, all of your insurance policies have been posted to each of your association uh, website and connect. So all those policies are on there. And the committee just met with the insurance agents yesterday to start working on the budgetary projections for next year's policies. So we'll have some more information in the next coming months on, uh, on those budget projections. Pest control, the schedule has started to level off and the company is meeting the three-day appointment service requirements. Um, so again, thank you for calling in those and, uh, and, and being patient as we, we got through the transition. But it looks like everything's gonna settle down. So any issues, please let us know. We'll try to get it resolved with the vendor. Trash collection with waste management or waste connections, they are back to normal operations. I know they had some COVID issues with staffing in the last couple months um, and had some of the accounts were, um, were mixed up there. Again, you have two accounts here. You have a residential service account. So those are all the, all the unit owners that have their individual blue uh, trash cans for recycling um, that are provided by the county. And then we have the dumpster commercial contract that everybody has the large two or four yard dumpsters. Um, so they are back to normal schedule on that and their contract for the dumpster side the commercial side is coming up for renew and uh, Good news is we have 83 total dumpsters and the there's a new five-year contract being offered and the price for next year is not going to go up at all um, but then there are some other couple of uh, uh, Contract requirements and yearly increases that will affect down the line, but for next year the good news is is that the rate is not increasing. Landscaping, um, we have been uh, working very well with all four of the vendors uh, with the addition of Ryan Rourke. Um, he will be getting a couple additional certifications. Um, one is his horticultural certification, then he'll also be getting his urban forestry certification. Uh, that one will help with uh, any tree trimming needs. And uh, he'll be taking those tests in the next couple weeks. And first service, we're also going to be acquiring a uh, program called iAuditor. Um, and he'll have a, an iPad with him. Just helps with tracking, reporting, um, and some of the stuff he does. It'll be uh, a lot smoother for him to work. And it will be nice, nicer, cleaner reports for the Landscape Committee and the Board to review each month and each week. OLM next inspection is September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, those have been going fairly well with the vendors. Um, everybody's been passing. and. Uh, you know, as we get through summer, a lot of stuff changes with landscaping, so they're constantly uh, working, improving, and adapting to the, uh, the changing Florida environment. Sections two and four of the landscaping are coming up for renewal at the end of March 31st, 2021. So those are both with Down to Earth. The committee is in uh, current talks with contract revisions um, and updating all the language and specifications in there and then we'll, uh, we'll finalize the plan moving forward. Palm trees and oak trees. The second cycle of the palm trees will, is approaching, so next month in October they'll be starting the second cycle uh, to trim those palms again. And again, the Palm and Tree Committee uh, has been working with Ryan, working myself to improve those palm and oak tree contracts, just uh, changing up the specifications and the outlook on it, so the committee's been working well with us on that as well as the vendor. So. Again, more information to come on that as we, uh, we prep for the budget. Mulch, mulch is coming, mulch is here. Uh, the week of September 14th, mulch installation and deliveries will start. 
And just a reminder that the deliveries cannot take place more than seven days in advance. So as you see the mulch being delivered to your properties, they'll have to get that uh, unloaded and installed within seven days. So you'll see a lot of trucks going around, a lot of crews coming around in the next couple weeks as they get started. Again, just landscaping, uh, continuing landscaping. There was 29 work orders for the landscaping. Again, that's the system we use for the POCs to put in any landscape issues, concerns, or requests. So again, there were 29 for the month of August over the four sections. And the majority of those came from uh, just pruning techniques and landscaping requests. So if somebody wanted sod, new plants, and things like that, we run those through the Connect system. So overall, those have stayed uh, under, under 40 each month um, since we started this right now, since April. And it's a, it's a good system. and. Um, I think we'll continue to, to utilize this. Again, community notices. Um, as folks start coming back and, uh, and then there's new units that turn over, we ask to make sure that you update all your information with your unit owners, with your CAMs, with the front office, just making sure we have all the updated information. It's obviously very important as we get close to uh, the budget time, to annual meeting time, as well as if there's any issues um, during the months, during the weeks where there's a water issue or or a windstorm. Um, it's nice to be able to have the correct contact information, and it's very nice for the boards to be able to, to reach out to those owners if they need to access those units. And just a quick note that first service office will be closed Monday in observance for Labor Day, but then you can still call the main office and we'll get redirected to first services um, main main line, which will have somebody answer the phone and assist owners with uh, any general questions. If there are any specifics or emergencies, they'll get redirected to the appropriate person. So um, don't, don't hesitate to call Monday if something's going on. If you need something, there are people to help you um, out with those. And I hope that everybody has a great Labor Day. Stay safe. And uh, any questions? Yes. Would you advise, remind them the office is closing for right. today? Yes, and I forgot the office will be closing at 3 o'clock today part of the Labor Day weekend as well. So closed Monday all day, and they're out at 3 o'clock today. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll go into committee reports, and Dave, I would only ask is if you have a committee report to give your committee report, please go to the speaker phone to ensure everybody can hear you. Uh, Dave, do you have any committee reports? Uh, nothing to report. Rick? Nothing other than what I've got coming up on the agenda. Okay. Bill? I have nothing to add to what uh, Keith already said about palm tree. Thank you. All right. Noreen? Nope, I have nothing to report at this time. Ryan? Nothing. Janice? through the tools. Yes. <laughs> um, as Keith had stated, the Insurance Committee did meet yesterday, September 3rd, with um, Heritage uh, Insurance, which is our carrier in USI, and we did discuss the insurance forecast for the next year and also budget projections for the 2021-22. Uh, um, some old business that we um, got into was asking um, USI for a quote on flood insurance, which you will be hearing more about as that comes in, and also um, a, a long discussion on the 5% hurricane deductibles with the new contracts um, coming up. Before you know it, um, we wanted to discuss that. New business, we um, talked about our traveler's insurance and the DNO insurance um, because of a proposed uh, lawsuit that is um, coming up against the Federation First Service from the Master Association. We also reviewed the insurance landscape contract. And the big thing that we discussed was with claims, whenever um, a homeowner resident has an accident, please report first to the accident, first to the First Service residential and to your board of directors in your association. Um, before calling in any kind of um, company to do the repairs. We also scheduled our next meeting for October 8th um, when USI will present a tentative budget for the 2021-22 uh, um, year.
Thank you, Janice. Mm -hmm. uh, as the president's in court. Hey, Jack. Oh, Alan, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up, Alan. <laughs> That's what the, we really vice, don't want to hear about money, Alan, but go ahead. That's the vice president's job. You've got to keep the president in line. Yes, there you do. go. There you go. You did a good job. I know treasurer of your courts are no fun. You know, I, I, keep, I, I remember this commercial that come up, and this guy really grabs says, well, the first quarter numbers, and these numbers are good, and then this number is this number. So nobody wants your numbers. But here's the, I have two, two reports to give, actually. Uh, first of all, the year-end report from last year, 2019-20, and then the first quarter uh, treasurer's report of this current uh, year. So uh, last year, the Federation ended 2019-20 with $62,875 in current assets for members' equity and $429,304 in restricted fund balance. Um, and actually, I should, have, I should have prefaced this just to remind you that this report is proprietary and confidential, intended for presidents of Kings Point associations uh, only, and, and to share with their members only. Um, so, the, so we do have some current assets and then restricted fund balance assets as well. The restricted funds included a $165,273 balance in the insurance deductible fund, that's the AC2, that leaves us in great shape to start the new year. We had a good year with only $25,577 in expenses and $96,996 in revenue adding to the balance of the insurance deductible fund. The registration fees fund ended with a $136,968 balance, but the balance quickly became $68,268 in the next year, in 2021, as $68,700 was transferred into the professional services fund in accordance with the budget approved by the Federation and the membership. The contracts fund ended with $79,602 mainly from accumulated penalties from landscapers. As you may remember, the Federation will use about a third of this fund's balance, or about 28,500, in lieu of association assessments for the two additional palm fertilizations that were approved for 2021. The legal fund, which is AC1, the other administrative code, the legal fund ended with the required $25,000 balance. The Professional Services Fund actually ended with a deficit balance of 31747 Legal fees were spent investigating several past actions as questions were raised. Investigation findings will, and presentations will be made in the near future. Uh, the deficit uh, disappeared quickly, though, as the 2021 budget anticipated the fees for investigations and services uh, anticipated in search of the best way to reorganize uh, Kings Point governance. The 2021 budget called for an increase of 177800 for the Professional Services Fund, 109100 from assessment fees, and 68700 of excess funds that were transferred from the registration fees fund. <laughs> And finally, the remaining balances were $23,434 in the Community Promotions Fund, $15,912 in the Landscape Fund, and $14,988 in the Grounds Cleanup Fund. So that's the year-end report. Now, the first quarter of 2021 uh, ended. Um, so that's as, uh, let's see. Uh, June 30th. Okay. Wrong page. Okay, so the first quarter um, that ended June 30, 2020, um, the total current assets $64,813. Total restricted funds $435,251. The revenue is right on target. Um, right on budget, uh, $37,986 in re actual revenue. Operating expenditures, $335 in administrative, $675 utilities, 
$488 in contracts, so just about $1,500, which is, which is well under budget. Then the restricted funds, uh, the landscape fund, uh, of course, had no expenditures. $3,525 was added in revenue, making a total balance of $19,437. The grounds cleanup added $3,750, no expenditures for a total of $18,738. Both of these funds um, were set up and can be spent at any time as needed, uh, mainly in case we had storms uh, and we need to, to clean up from storms or in case we have some, some um, strange uh, problems with our landscape that's not covered under the landscape contract that we have to pay some money for. Uh, so those balances are there. The insurance deductible fund, uh, of course, there's no revenue because we had a healthy balance leading into it. Only 5,100 in expenditures in the first quarter, which is great, for a balance of 160,173. However, the last couple months we have had several more, so we'll see how this goes at the end of the year. The legal fund, the AC1, um, again has a balance of $25,000. No revenue, no expenditures. <coughs> The Professional Services Fund had a revenue of $95,975. That included the $68,700 transfer from the registration fees. And expenditures in the first quarter of professional services of $16,199, leaving a balance of $48,029 in the professional services uh, fund. The Contracts Fund uh, expenditures $14,310. Uh, mainly for the, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, palm fertilization, the additional palm fertilizations, leaving a balance of 65291 The Community Promotion uh, Fund spent 3179 all for just the regular maintenance of the, of the community website, the uh, kingspointsuncoast.com website. Uh, no revenues, leaving a balance of 20255 and the registration fees, actually revenue of exactly $10,000 was added, expenditures of six, 68700 that was transferred into the professional services fund, uh, leaving a balance in registration fees of 78268 And that's, uh, that's, that's my report. Would you, would you go back and read the professional services again? The, uh, the current for the first quarter of professional services? Yes. Revenue, total revenue is 95975 That includes, that part of that is the 68700 that yeah. was transferred and the rest was from other people. Any expenses? Expenses of 16199 That's for the first quarter. Okay, and how much did you say the balance was? Balance is $48,029. Okay. And my question is, if you started with ninety-five thousand, you no, had no, no, we didn't start with that. No, so you, had, you had ninety-five thousand in revenue. Uh -huh. You only spent sixteen thousand. Right. How do you come up to forty-eight some thousand dollars? Because we started with the deficit, as you recall. So that um, is the deficit in there. The deficit from last year end is taking it out. Right, that's we started with the deficit of thirty of a minus, so you start with a minus thirty-one thousand seven forty-seven. Okay, so our total expenses, including the minus, were over forty thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. And that's my report. Any other questions? That's my report. Thank you, Alan. Good job. Alan, I don't know if I can top that exciting report. <laughs> <laughs> the first number of the quarters of the first grade, that was actually the second number of the quarters of the second thing. Uh, as president, I do have a few things to add. Uh, one, I want to start with COVID-19. I know there is much discussion in the community about reopening the community. Understand that the Federation Board and VESTA to protect ourselves against any possible lawsuits uh, must ensure that we follow the guidelines of the CDC and the guidelines of the governor. 
the governor has put limitations on the size of uh, groups that can meet, requiring groups to keep six feet distance and wear masks. So we aren't able to open things or even outdoor activities to the degree that people would like. Uh, and we understand that. But understand we are constrained in the manner of which we can open facilities and open meeting rooms and the card room and the theater because we are constrained by the CDC guidelines and by the executive orders of the governor. Uh, I would like to thank VESTA and the rest of the Federation Board for the work that they have done since March in keeping the community as safe as possible. Uh, I personally know seven people within Kings Point who have come down with COVID. Fortunately, all cases were mild. Uh, so it is within the residents of Kings Point. And opening the community up is only going to jeopardize the rest of the community. So I understand that we would all like to get back to normal. It's going to take a while to get back to normal. And I would request that you have, as Ginger said, the patience. Hopefully someday we will get there. The Federation Board would love to get together in a meeting with its members and be able to go back to having meetings the way we did. So just keep that in mind that COVID is within the community uh, and the more precautions and safeguards we take and the longer it takes to open things up as directed by the governor, uh, the better off this community is from safety. Uh, we are working on budgets. As Janice reiterated, uh, we are working uh, in getting a budgetary figure for insurance. Due to the number of disasters around the world, uh, including the hurricanes that hit Florida, the hurricane that just recently hit uh, New Orleans and Louisiana and Texas, uh, you also have things that occur in the rest of the world, uh, which are storms hitting Europe, <coughs> storms hitting Japan, storms hitting India, that all this stuff goes to uh, property casualty. Uh, we have been informed and there's been news articles published in the newspaper that property casualty insurance is going to see a increase uh, that increase, and this is not from our insurance company, it's what's reported, that our increase could be anywhere from 10 to 15 percent, remembering that the property casualty is probably the largest part of our insurance. Uh, we are working diligently on the contracts which expire between now and next year. A couple of them noted by Keith. We are also working on uh, redoing and renewing the VESTA contract. And we have a committee who is working with Ginger and will continue to work with Ginger. Uh, I do have one question that I'm going to ask Ginger to answer, and that is going to be the first quarter report from the Land Trust, uh, which we need Dan to come and do a presentation for the first quarter. So. Uh, we have a request into Ginger that Dan appear at the next board meeting or at the membership meeting uh, later in September to give uh, the first quarter VESTA because I know the residents are interested in what is going on. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it on our June 25th call or not, but uh, unfortunately, uh, in the Kings Point community, and I'm going to call it family, uh, we lost an individual who worked with Kings Point not only to allow them to purchase the recreational facilities, but also provided us the capability financially to buy them. Uh, gentlemen, and most of you have heard of is Frank Surface. Uh, he passed away in July. I will tell you that board, the board had the opportunity to meet with his son.
son, who is now the CEO of Vesta, and we express personally to David Surface the uh, sympathy uh, on behalf of the entire community and on behalf of the entire board. Uh, two other items that I have. One is a letter that we received, but before I get into the good news, uh, Federation published a newsletter. The overwhelming response that we have received uh, is exceedingly positive uh, on the newsletter. Uh, there was a question, in fact, Janice related to it earlier, which is a potential lawsuit and a request for mediation that the master has filed. Uh, unfortunately, the master saw uh, it necessary to include the Federation Board uh, in the potential lawsuit. We have no choice but to refer that to our insurance company. Uh, the insurance company requires uh, defense. Part of the policy requires that if they are going to take one of the claims in the lawsuit, they would defend all claims, uh, which means they would also defend First Services if First Service so chose. But keep in mind that the community has a $20,000 deductible for whatever uh, Travelers does as far as defense of the First Service Board, excuse me, of the Federation Board and of First Service's actions. We have had conversations with First Service uh, asking them, because we are such a minor part of this lawsuit, uh, that they cover a portion of that $20,000 deductible. But as this weaves its way through mediation and possible lawsuit, keep in mind that uh, it, it, it Travelers does not really like uh, doing defenses and paying claims, also, although we do have insurance with them, that it can also ultimately lead to an increase in the cost for our insurance with Travelers. The last thing I would like to say in regard to that newsletter, there are individuals within this community, and I am not taking sides of any individuals. There are individuals in this community that see bent on uh, disruption within the community <coughs> and not on working together. And hopefully, and the Federation Board is unanimous in its desire to put a dissension within the community behind us. It doesn't seem individuals would like to do that. They would rather nitpick and find problems. Uh, and we will be more than willing to work with any of those individuals and provide them anything they need. But we have to keep in mind that we are one community. And it is time we started acting as one community. Uh, finally, uh, on a good note, uh, as most of you know, or hopefully knew, that basically the Sun City Center Security Patrol raffled off a golf cart. They contacted the Federation and asked the Federation if they could use one of our parking lots. The Federation uh, spoke to Ginger and we allowed them to use the porticos to keep them out of the weather and the hot sun. And we received a letter this week, and I just want to read you the letter. It says, on behalf of all members of Sun City Security Patrol, we wish to express our appreciation of the generosity of Kings Point, allowing us to sell tickets for our golf cart raffle under the portico of the North Club on Tuesday, August 25th, and at the South Club Wednesday, August 26th and to say a big thank you for your generous contributions made to us by your residents to the Security Patrol. In support of our efforts to sell tickets, we appreciate the way your members came and looked after our people 
by making sure they had water, and by their patients waiting while names and contact numbers were filled out on the record sellout. And I'm going to say that again. On the record sellout number of tickets we sold. The efforts made by your residents reflect how much King Point is an integral part of Sun City and how much of you contribute towards the good of our community and to the security patrol. So one, thank you, Ginger and Vesta, for working with the organization and to the residents of the community. I thank you. It's nice that we get recognized by some organizations within the community. Uh, that is the end of my president's report. Uh, I changed the agenda on purpose today because I wanted the reports given. Uh, we skipped open forum. Uh, and I figure open forum, uh, you have the agenda items that are listed, but op open forum allows you to discuss items on the agenda. It's kind of difficult for you to discuss reports that are given uh, before they're even given. So I will open it up for open forum at this time before we get into uh, new business. If anyone has any questions regarding anything on the agenda? I do. Uh, wait a minute. You have pound six to unmute your phone? No, I have, a, I have a question. I will get to you, but let me finish my statement to the residents. Fair enough, Mr. President. Uh, you may pound six uh, to unmute your phone. Uh, the first person that will be recognized is Will Rand as a comment. It's star and six. I will allow Jack, him to it's star six. Jack. It's oh, star six. six. I'm sorry, it's star six. Right. Okay, no. I'm standing six. closer here, so... No, you can get over. Well, I have a question. Don't leave. Well, he can hear you. He I have a question you. about your president's report. You're, you were referring specifically to the directors and officers' liability insurance coverage for travelers, correct? That is correct. And if the legal expenses uh, come in and we are forced to defend this lawsuit, we have a $20,000 deductible, correct? That is correct. Plus the threat of increased premiums in the future, renewals by the travelers, correct? That is correct. And where does that $20,000 come from? It would come out of our budget. And who? We would have to find it from in our budget. And the budget money comes from? The residents the themselves. Residents. This, Thank is you. A, this is a cost to the residents. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns uh, regarding the agenda items? Again, if you would like to speak, to <coughs> star six. Seeing I hear nothing, what I will do. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yes. Is Hello. That, yes. Can you identify? Yes. This is Susan Rava from Manchester. I just have a question. When it was reported, the professional services, what does that entail? How is, how is that broken down? What goes into professional services? Any professional services that we utilize, such as uh, legal counsel. So uh, any legal deals that you have to work on, let's say, for instance, when we have the insurance chase, that those those expenses will go into that fund. Is that what I'm understanding? What were you saying about insurance? <clears throat> when we changed insurances, there were, you had to have legal counsel. So that money is going into insurance. Is that correct? If, if we, for RFP, uh, the process in the selection, a, a attorney uh, was providing guidance and working on the RFP, Therefore, any cost for that particular aspect <coughs> would come out of the professional services fund. Okay, and then there was a report about, I'm trying to find the amount, uh, uh, about transfers. How much was it from the transfers? And that's, you used part of that money for this professional services where you took the 68000 When we did the, When we did the budget, 
for the 2021 year, it was proposed in our budget that there was $68,000 that was collected for administrative fees that were established back in 2012 uh, that previously had been being transferred to land trust that we passed a budget and it was fully explained when the Federation budget was proposed that we were taking the transfer fees from the previous budget year, which were $68,000, and transferring those funds into the professional services fund. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And as Alan stated, and just to clarify the Professional Services Fund, the Professional Services Fund was established in December of 2018 at the Federation Board meeting after the uh, issue regarding the Mainscape mediation. And it was fully established, and the charges from Mainscape mediation and any additional dollars that were not paid to Mainscape were transferred into the Professional Services Fund. And since December of 2018, all legal expenses have been paid out of the Professional Services Fund. And that is the way the services were budgeted in 2019 to 2020 and in 2020 to 2021. Any other questions? Tom? Yes, Jack. Yes. Jack. Yes. Yeah, I'm Tom Ricketts. Tom Ricketts, Wall Street President here. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if this is. I'm not sure if this is the time to ask the question or not. So. If it relates, uh, if it relates to the budget or one of the reports, yes. Well, it, it relates to the uh, remodeling of the South Clubhouse. Uh, Well, tell me what the question is, and I'll either tell you whether we can address it now or once we get into the issue. Okay, well, it's a comment on, I just want to know, I would like some detail on what the uh, proposed uh, improvement in there is, because there are certain things that I would like to see in there. That, is, that will be discussed, and it's not a necessarily improvement, but it is a refurbishing of them. Uh, part of the refurbishing of them, which Ginger, I'm quite sure, will discuss, is the moisture that was found in the walls that need to be addressed. But it's more of a refurbishing. We are not gutting the locker rooms and starting from scratch. It is a refurbishing. And Ginger will do the, and Ginger will do a prior presentation to the board, looking for uh, the board to approve given expenses. That should be helpful later. Any other question? Hey, Jack. Yes. Adam. Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Is that you, Dell? No, my name is Charles Steinberg. I'm from Iowa. Yes, Charles. And I got a question. I know you can't really discuss it. But uh, it, it, uh, it bothers me to hear that with the master and the federation are at odds again, court causing a lawsuit. And we talk about everybody being part of King's Point. How can we be part of King's Point if the Congress to be a lot of the I will tell you. Charles, let me, let me respond that we have not been a part of or involved in any issue between the master and first service. Uh, why uh, the master has saw fit to include the Federation in its request 
and in addition uh, decided to use proprietary and confidential documents within their potential filing, uh, which had nothing to do with anything regarding their issue with first service, but was written by the Federation Council uh, in regard to questions regarding the Federation First Service Residential Contract. And I would feel that the people who decided to uh, distribute a confidential and proprietary document uh, should, as a member of the Master Board, known better, but that is beside the point. I would only tell you that we basically, from a Federation Board perspective, have attempted to work with the Master. In fact, there is a joint Federation Master Board meeting scheduled on September 9th in the afternoon. Uh, I agree with you, Charles, that there is, does not need to be and there should not be dissension between the two boards. Uh, we have no control over what the master does. Uh, we were surprised from a federation board perspective that we were included in a lawsuit or a uh, dispute between uh, first service and the master and we have no choice once we are named in a lawsuit or request for mediation that we must refer it to our insurance uh, company and we must protect the Federation Board and the residents of Kings Point. All right. I understand that. I just don't understand who could have thought like that. Uh, you'd have right, thank you, man. You'd have to ask the fed. You'd have to ask the master board that question. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Any other questions? Then we'll close open forum, and I think this works better because you get to ask questions about the financials, such as Alan gave, or any other questions the board members who gave things. So I'm going to suggest uh, to the board that we move open form to after the reports and before new business so people get more of an opportunity to ask questions about what they were told during the business. <coughs> Item of business on new business, as there is no unfinished business, is the Community Promotions Committee has asked to do a presentation to the board on some ideas and thoughts they have. So I will turn the uh, meeting over to Rick, uh, and you can introduce members of your committee. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Last year when the uh, Community Promotions Committee was developed, one of, its, one of its areas of responsibility was to look at the various aspects that we're currently involved in. And one of those was the uh, website and marketing areas. Uh, our web current website uh, contract is going into being five years old. And keeping good business practices, the, uh, the committee felt that it was a good time to test the waters and go out for a request for proposals. There was a number of bases for that, and we feel that the community should know the various reasons we're doing that and the process we're going to follow. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to the subcommittee chairman on website and marketing, Nick Bader, who will present a a PowerPoint presentation, but which will be available uh, through the media or through... They'll be on the screen and they'll do a voiceover. Nick. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to try...
try and move the computer over near the phone if the cable reaches the upper end. We may have to give it verbally. Reboot. 
Have we got it? Yes. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Good job. We need a couple more minutes. While he's bringing up the application, I'm just going to do two quick things which are on the agenda. And the first one is the update appointments of the contract committee. Uh, as president of the association, one of my duties is to uh, name people to the committees. And under the contract committee, we received a number of applications to be on the contract committee and the following individuals have been appointed to the contract committee. The first one is Chris Robinson. The second one is Jose Vagas. And the third one is George Baez. Welcome. I know you have your work cut out for you. Uh, some of the contracts are going to be rather extensive such as the VESTA contract but welcome aboard. Also, we had some requests uh, for members to be on the insurance committee. Therefore, I am appointing Trina Schwartz and Ray Hunsaker uh, to those committees. And the website will be updated if it has not been published. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, begin with. Um, <coughs> Make sure you speak up so they can hear you. Yes. This is uh, a proposal to do a refresh of our brand identity and website design. And um, I want to start off by um, telling or explaining why we want to do this and um, what has happened to the original website, which was done and was very well done. Um, but over time, it, this, the site has started to degrade where uh, it's better to start over than to try and put the old one back together. And so there was an original marketing plan in 2017 to develop the unique Kings Point brand identity and positioning, which is pretty much the same thing we're asking now. A separate Kings Point website was established for the sole purpose of promoting Kings Point and marketing. On August um, 2018, a change order was executed to reduce a retainer of $1,785 to $750 a month. Base Shore Solutions would monitor the web traffic and provide one and a half hours of Google Analytics data input and one hour of monthly report meeting. Base Shore would continue to to the SEO um, monitoring. Any errors found will be related to Kings Point team to be executed internally by the team. A request, any request for support required by Kings Point will be charged on a time and materials basis at Bayshore Solutions rate of $200 an hour. And at this point, Bayshore were stopped being proactive. And in the, uh, also what happened was the previous board, the marketing committee was never renewed. Updating and maintenance would fall on Vesta's office. Items without regard to how it would affect the continuity of the website and user interface and the initial purpose as purely a marketing uh, site was lost. Line breaks, it becomes harder to navigate. Non-marketing material is put on the site. Flyout windows for 
King's Point merchandise was put on the front page with blocking the navigation and it does not keep up with the latest trends. And the brand identity, although King's Point logo has very strong equity, our brand is not being used consistently. There is no instructions, which is called a style sheet, on how to use the different elements and colors of the brand. A brand identity refresh look it requires a brand purpose and positioning considered. Conduct marketing research on the viability of any changes to the brand. Likeable brand personality, a memorable logo, which we do have. Attractive color palette, professional typography, and on-brand graphics and images. A style sheet is a document that establishes very specific rules on how a brand element should be used for all visual materials. Size, relationships, and spacing for each use, support graphics, and colors. For a website, we, we would like to review the user interface and site architecture, allowing visitors to easily navigate the site and find topics they are looking for on mobile phones, tablets, and desktop. Highlight our location, proximity to medical, airports, cities, entertainment, and sports through maps. Landing pages based on visitor search terms. Chart comparing Kings Point advantages over plus 55 active living communities. A description of the homes including images and range of homes, description of communi how community is managed, description Im images and video of clubhouses, clubs, fitness center, spa, golf, pickleball, tennis, shuffleboard, restaurant, bar, etc. A chart showing what is included in the maintenance fees and a search function within the site. What we're proposing is that KingsPointTampaBay.com become our main marketing site. And why this is, why we're doing that is because um, when you do a search on Kings Point, all, a lot of websites come up. And it can be very confusing um, to a new person coming in on uh, which one belongs to which. Um, so we wanted to start with a new user, a new domain name, and we would keep the Kings Point Sun Coast uh, URL, and it would, if somebody picked that site, it would, it would automatically point to the Tampa Bay uh, website, which will be our new one. Um, we have um, Kings Point. Sun Coast as one site, Kings Point Sun City Center.com, which is Vesta's. We have KPSCC.com, which is for a service, and we have KPMaster.com, which is the master. First Services website is archaic, impossible to navigate, and contains information non residents need to see. We recommend that First Service upgrade its website, make it for residents only by putting it behind a login and password. Vesta's website does not readily indicate it's a vendor site, it's full of advertisements, it's difficult to navigate and confuse visitors uh, uh, what, which is our marketing and which is not. The Master Association's website uh, I would like I would like it to uh, follow um, within the confines of our identity and so forth, uh, and we'll see how that goes. The firms were chosen to bid our base shore solutions, which is our current uh, provider, 
and um, it's just a normal procedure. If you're going to go out for a year, that you include them, and um, so they're on the list. Best of Property Services has um, requested to be included in the um, the RFP. Um, they have the, um, the facilities to be able to do it. J2 Studio, which is one of the outside firms that uh, the committee researched and felt would be appropriate to ask. Shake Tampa, which is another that has very credible um, website, and Berta Creative. So those five uh, firms would be asked to uh, respond to our RFP. And that's it. Any questions? I have one. Yes. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest between Speak committee up. members? Are there any conflicts of interest between the committee members and any of the uh, companies you just recommended to us? Or no. The RFP? No, not okay. whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, does, any, does the board have other questions? Hey. We have a question. No. Oh. And thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Glad to be recognized, Mr. President. Well, as soon as we move the phone back where it belongs. <laughs> I don't handle equipment. Mr. President, based on the uh, present presentation by the uh, members of the Community Promotion Committee, I would uh, make a motion that the uh, board approve their request to go ahead with the RFP to, the, uh, for the, uh, for, to produce a venue to review uh, contractors that would be able to perform what we're expecting along the way of website development. And how much expense do you realize in this, and will this RFP be going through legal counsel? Yes. Yes. Excuse me? Will you, this be going through legal counsel, and what do you expect the RFP to cost? The we're looking for a total budget, including contract fees, uh, of about twenty-five thousand dollars. That would be including any legal expenses that yes. would incur for the contract and the RFP. Yes. And yes, we expect that all legal procedures and required contract procedures will go through relative to this request. So you're looking for a request from the board to expend a maximum of twenty-five thousand dollars for the RFP process. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, I think I, I think we have that um, uh, that amount of up at the present time, which we hardly used over the past couple of years. So part of it is already budgeted, and we would like to add a. a yeah. Alan, you're looking um, that up, right? Yeah. This. Um, what uh, the twenty-five thousand is is. Is uh, what you're what you're estimating that the whole thing's going to cost, or that's what you're going to spend mm -hmm. just to do the RFP? No, no, no. We we expect that to be the legal fees to get through the RFP, as well as the contract. Is that right? In the first year, to actually develop. Right after yeah. it's actually developed. Mm -hmm. So so, so take out the develop. How much would you expect the RFP and the contract? from a legal perspective or cost to be? I, I feel that that would be included in our budget already, but we have excess funds in the budget now. Um, and so do we have a monthly cost that you believe that it will run? 
you were like way ahead. They wait, just, wait, 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 one person at a time. Alan, you were? Um, yeah, I'm not sure, well, I'm not sure there's, there's uh, an excess of, or additional 5,000 in the community promotions uh, account, but we do have money in, uh, that we could spend uh, in our operating uh, And in so professional we services we have it also, correct? For the attorney. Right, for the attorney. For the yes. attorney, but if we go right. out and have a professional services company develop the website, whatever cost would come out of professional services, uh, or it could be also supplemented by some of the dollars within the CPC, am I correct? So let, let me again just back up and see that I understand. So you're you're thinking five thousand to do the RFP and potentially twenty thousand is what you're estimating the budget would be to get it accomplished, correct? Uh, we don't expect a large amount of legal fees at all. They would just have to review um, how the RFP looks to go out, and then they would. Um, review the returned RFPs uh, to make sure everything's all right. And, um, and then when you contract with the, the design firm, they would approve uh, the contract. And we certainly don't believe it's going to be as much as the okay, first service contract as as costs us, or the VESTA contract, or the landscape contract. It's going to be a minimal amount. We expect it to be a minimal amount. There's been money in the budget that has not been used, and we've been budgeted constantly. I feel it, it, uh, it's represented there properly. Yeah. I think the can FBI I chime in? Wait a minute, wait. Can I chime in for a second? Go ahead, chime in. I'll just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think we're ahead of ourselves. Uh, yeah. All we're talking about is approval for that committee to seek an RFP response of what they may or may not be able to do and propose from those five companies. That's what I'm understanding this conversation is about right now. Correct. I suggest that there is absolutely zero reason a lawyer should be involved in going for an RFP. We always have a, we always have an attorney review the RFP before okay. they Okay, I mean, that's, you know, I get it, but that's a nominal, that should be nominal, and it should be once, as, as Nick said, once the contracts are, uh, you know, finalized, and present it, and you approve one, then you could you go for those kind of. Things. But we're just talking about an RFP. We're calling up companies and say, "Hey, propose what you would do for us." Am I right? That is correct. Yeah, no, we I don't see a whole lot of cost attached to that at all. Not, we're not attaching a dollar amount to the RFP. Shouldn't be. We right. We want to see what they're going to give us based upon what we're asking for to see if it's even viable for us to even move forward. It's a proposal, going, for God's sake. Is this going to be an actual RFP that is sent out describing what It's going to be an want. actual RFP, and I, I, I have to admit, I kind of take exception to this right now, which has never been performed before. This is an nominal amount to go out for an RFP. Once the RFP is developed and comes back and has to be reviewed, there might be some minor uh, attorney fees, but after that, then we'll know what we anticipate the contract is for. And right. then we will come in with a request for budget. Yeah, but, hey, so please. I only asked what you expected the cost of this to be. You the said cost, like, To be honest with you, of course, has not been anticipated because there is no requirement. To, we to, will have to review the RFP with counsel. All right. And when was the last time that kind of procedure was re requested by any organization? It is done on every contract that we do and every RFP we send out. Before, before the RFP was approved or after it was approved? It's a part mm -hmm. of... The process, Rick, and I just asked what you assume the cost I, I think it, to be. I think you're overstating the situation, Mr. President. Well, you want this approved, and I'm we asking for know. approval based on what we intend to do. Alan, yes, I, I think it sounds like it, there's certainly minimal cost for the RP. There's enough money to do it to answer your question. I think we go ahead with the RP. Certainly, once we get the RP results, then we need to. Of course, look at it and analyze it and see what goes from there. But your original question about 
about cost. Uh, for the yes, RFP? There, there's, yes, there, there's, there's a fine. There's, yes, we can it would be minimal that. is the answer. Yes. Yes, right. I, I, get, I get it. Yes, it, yeah, I'll take the word minimal is fine, but I, I think the proposal process for this activity going to legal is useless at that point because you're asking five companies to propose. That's all. Propose. No commitment, no expenditures, no... Then are we doing an RFP or are we just... You're just doing a proposal. You're not doing an RFP. This isn't landscape or okay, anything then, like that. Then, then I, I'm just saying, I don't so think there's a motion on the floor to approve an RFP. Uh, Mr. President, we're having a discussion on a motion that hasn't even been seconded. Second. I seconded that, okay? Thank you. <laughs> but if we aren't doing an RFP, right. and all we are doing is contact these companies it's and saying what, then we don't need an RFP approval if we're not going to do an RFP. There are questions for an RFP. Okay. Let me, then let me clarify do. that. Then you have a minimal cost. Then back to his problem to, to deal with. It's all yours, Rick. Go for it, baby. No, wait a minute. <laughs> You've so, got to deal with that now, because I just took other, you out of it. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Call for the question. Any objection? Then without objection, motions passed to proceed with an RFP to the website companies would only ask that any RFP that goes out to protect the Federation that it is reviewed by uh, Federation Council. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, request that the board has which you all have in your uh, packet is a request that agenda item be added to the special membership to the membership meeting on September 8th. It is to direct the treasurer to provide a detailed explanation of professional service expenditures and legal fund expenditures from April 1st, 2019 through eight through August 31st, 2020. Rick, can we, can we, Rick, can we go back to the meeting? I'm sorry. Uh, my concern with the petition is in the reports that our treasurer has provided to the community that there has been no expenditures since April 1st, 2019 through August 31st, 2020, as the legal fund is a fund to be used by associations and no dollars were paid out of legal. Uh, is that correct? Uh, From the legal fund, correct? No. So if we were to put this on the agenda item, it would be on the agenda item and the basic and response regarding legal fund is there no uh, explanation required because no dollars have been spent. Does anybody have an objection with this being put on the agenda for September 28th? Uh, September 18th, excuse me. Since hearing no objection, Ma Bell, would you ensure that not only the petition uh, is attached to the agenda, but the item is added to the <coughs> uh, September 18th membership. Last item on the agenda would be the presentation uh, by Vesta for the refurbishing of the self club men's and women's locker room. I think you want to sit down. <laughs> My understanding that the board has the latest request that I sent. Okay. And I know you're going to have to speak up. Okay. Um, I'll just go through the, the summary and get to our recommendation. 
As discussed with the board in the last budget year, 2019-20, the board approved budgeted South Club Ladies Restroom Remodeling and Steam Room Renovation Project was unable to be completed prior to the end of the 2019-20 fiscal year. Subsequently, in the current 2021 budget, the South Club Ladies Locker Room Project is also included in this year's budget, and that is for $94,000. After discussions with the board and taking the current conditions of both men's and women's restrooms into consideration, along with items designated in the reserve study, our recommendation is for a complete renovation of both men's and women's South Club locker rooms and bathroom areas concurrently in the current 2020-21 budget season. Due to the age of the original finishes and lack of adequate moisture prevention applications, along with the constant use of the area, as well as negative resident feedback on the age condition of the rooms, the projected scope of work to satisfy all these circumstances is anticipated to exceed the available budgeted funds. This proposal is for the renovation project of the 20-year-old facility, which would include a more competent moisture tolerant application and introduce a more aesthetically pleasing and modern appearance for the much utilized amenities. Over the last few months, we have defined the scope of work that needs to be completed to this end and obtained bids from four licensed general contractors. BEST is requesting additional funding to properly renovate both restroom facilities and if the board agrees with this approach and approves the funding, our recommendation would be to initiate this project immediately to a complete construction prior to season. I wasn't going to read the bulleted scope of work, but since Mr. Ricketts asked about it, I'll just uh, go over that generally. Uh, this includes removal of drywall from four feet and down, replacement with concrete board, chemical treatment of the studs, concrete surfaces and wall interiors, replacement of the shower tile and pans, eight glass shower doors and frames, ceiling tiles and replacement with moisture grade acoustical ceiling tiles, uh, the lockers, uh, removal and replacement with fewer quantity but additional bench seating, the uh, removal of the tile including floor and walls in both the saunas, sauna doors and frames, sinks and plumbing fixtures, countertops, repainting, replacement of the exhaust fans, toilet partition divider, relamination, and a, a couple of uh, changes to the toilet fixtures. Moving back to the recommendation, BESTA recommends that the Federation Board of Directors consider the proposal to combine the 2019 and 20 ladies restroom steam room renovation project with the current fiscal year's women's locker room renovation project into one full renovation project for both men's and women's locker rooms. We further recommend that the Federation Board consider the proposal of AV construction for the complete renovation inclusive of partition relamination, exhaust fans, toilets and valves, and a moderate contingency for the amount of $194,825. The contractor that is awarded the bid will be required to sign our agreement between owner and contractor as directed by the Federation Board in the November 1st, 2019 board meeting. As mentioned, we currently have budgeted $94,000 for the ladies' locker room project in the current budget, and the amount for the total project exceeds that budgeted amount. The board has a newly established cash reserves, which has ample funds not spent from previous year's budget, including the $50,600 from the prior year's budget for the ladies' restaurant. We therefore request the Federation Board approve an additional amount of $100,825 from cash reserves for this project to properly fulfill the proposed scope of full renovations for the South Club men's and women's locker room. How much? 
What do you believe? Okay, you believe the total cost to be one ninety four eight twenty five with additional money or one ninety four eight twenty five with the addition of the toilets. Okay, and how do you get to one hundred eight twenty five? Because we've got ninety four in the current budget. Okay, so you're only asking for an addition. And this is for both. <coughs> this is total for both, both projects. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I um, um, have a question. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Any expenditure over fifty thousand dollars, even though it is listed in the budget amount, uh, is required to get the quote and have the contract for full board approval before that money is spent. So really you're looking for us to approve uh, with quotes the whole 194825 of which $94,000 has already been budgeted. Can I put it to you, put it out that way? Yes. Okay, that would get yes. you where you need to go, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, before we open it up to discussion, I would move uh, that we accept the recommendation of spending uh, $194,825 for the refurbishment of the men's and ladies' room as proposed by VESTA and that any additional dollars over the $94,000 come out of the capital, excuse me, the operating cash reserves, uh, which has over a half a million dollars currently listed in it. And that capital reserve, as the board will remember, is for excesses dollars from previous years that have not been spent. So any additional dollars over your budget dollars would basically be you would be money on hand that would be used and would be a no additional cost to the residents. And therefore that's my motion. Can I have a second? Second. Now I'll open it on the floor for discussion. Yes, Dave. Okay, Ginger, in your recommendation, you show 194825 AP's bid on the prior page shows 189000 There's about a $5,000 difference. For contingency. Okay, yeah. that's 5000 for contingency. Yeah, it's a minimal amount, but you never know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Noreen? Um, yes, You've I got to come up near Ginger so people can hear you. I'm noticing in the proposed budget, I see that it says for two new toilets. So I'm assuming it's one for the men's and one for the women's out of, there's how many toilets in each restroom? And so you're going to have one taller toilet, you're adding one taller toilet, one for the women's and one for the men's. Yes, ma'am. So um, we're replacing all the valve kits for all toilets, and we're taking two standard toilets and raising them, um, one in each restroom. So there's already one for handicap in each restroom. In each restroom. So there's five shorter ones so we're out of, besides that one. So we're taking one of the five and making a taller toilet. In the women's, yes. In the women's, yes. not in the men's. Um, Say here, two one in each. One in each. One in each. So, so there will be each would still have a four, each two tall ones, one handicap. Two in the handicap and then two individuals. So two in each, yes, would be tall ones. Okay, so and then the um, so that means the three of them 
would still be a shorter one. Yes. I'm proposing that we do at least half and half. That's what I'd like to see happen. Because I think that you're, you're modernizing the bathrooms. And just to add one taller one, I think, you know, so that's, that's what I'm proposing. How many, and toilets, like discussion on how many toilets are in the men's room? There are three. I, I have a second. Yeah, I'm waiting for um, the Sorry, Do you have your inventory? Yes, sir. Somebody said yes on the phone. Who said yes <laughs> on the phone? Probably. <laughs> I actually don't go in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Really? I have no. no. I've got three a, urinals and 12 toilets total. Uh, I have the. There's going to be more toilets. I got it. Just to make sure we're. The reason being is Noreen suggested that half and half. Are you only speaking to the ladies or are you also speaking to the men? Well, I can't how many are the men's. I can't speak for the men's. I don't well, know. We have five. I got it. We, in the women's, we have five standard and one high boy in the handicap currently. And in the men's, we have four standard, one high boy in the handicap, and three urinals. Uh, can I ask? Uh, fair. Request, fair suggestion, understanding, well, the environment we live in. Guys stand up, I don't know how important that is, versus you know, uh, women's situation, so there is a difference. But in the end, uh, question would be, what is the difference in cost between those two types of toilets? Including Same. installation. Including, is there, a, is there a substantial difference in cost, first off? We were going to, if we take a standard, which we weren't going to change, to a high boy, it's $250. We were already planning on replacing the valve package at the back that on is. everything. So it's 250 bucks. So 250 per plus whatever number. Right. Okay. Secondly, uh, you guys receive uh, relentless incoming requests, conversation calls, complaints, suggestions all day long, correct? And I think you're pretty good at categorizing and, and, and organizing them so you can measure what you manage, which I do appreciate uh, these reports that are like that. Out of the numbers of calls that you get relative to recreational activities and, and situations like that, do you have a category where people have actually called in complaining about the height of the toilets or the, in, the, the lack of ability to use them comfortably? Is, yeah. is this um, a item that people talk about? Um, thank you, uh, Ryan, for bringing that up. Actually, Mr. Mass may also ask that uh, we track a lot of things. Regrettably, that's not what I have tracked. Um, I would say just generic in my experience, whether it's lounge chairs, uh, seating in the bar areas, the lounge you know, hallways, or in the bathrooms. Um, people do appreciate the higher ones because they have trouble navigating sitting low and then standing up higher. The actual difference is two and a quarter inches, just so you know, yeah. between a... I, 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 I don't want to know exactly. I'm just asking yeah. these questions to give. I'm not, but I'm to, to answer minutes. your question, uh, I'm sorry we don't have any... Right, let to support let me ask you a question, Ginger. Yeah. How many regular toilets are in the ladies' room? Five. There are five? Yes. You would, you would be saying four... We planned on one. replacing one of them. So that would be four and one. And I'm not including the handicap. Because we the handicap's to already take care of. So we're just talking the standard door. There's six then. Four no. and one. And I think Noreen is saying go three and two. Three standard, two. Yeah, so you have at least three tall ones and three shorter ones. Yes. Because I've been told, well, well... Wait, time out. We're not changing the... Handicap stall. That's so. Forget the handicap yeah, stall that we're looking at. That count the right. How many not including the handicap stall in the women's room are there? Uh, five standard right now. Okay. So we looked at doing one. Correct. Okay. So we would be looking at doing one more in the ladies' room, yes. which would give three standard, two high boys, and then the handicap correct. stall. Or three high boys, is that correct? correct? Wait a minute, Rick, I'll get to you. Now, in the men's room, how many are there? Four standard. And a handicap? Yes. So we'd be looking at putting in one more high boy in the men's room? Mm -hmm. Which would make it three and two. Correct. Is that correct? Because uh, you, 
four standards would be three and one. You said to forget about. No, but it, when you get done. It, total, it would be three and two. Yes. It would be three and two. The same in the ladies' room, it would be uh, three, three and three. So three the three. really only thing we're doing is looking at, because you already planned on adding a high boy in the men's room. So you're looking at adding one high boy in the men's room and, and, one, in and one additional over your proposal in the ladies' room. For $500. Which would be $500. Yes, Rick. Yes, Rick. Yeah. I mean, the, the cost is immaterial. Like I had mentioned in our last meeting, I don't care if we put in 10 of them. The only thing we want to make sure is that we are in compliance with handicap requirements. Agreed. And we are. And if it's our choice, then we're talking about something that's minuscule. So, Noreen, does that meet what you were looking for? Because you would end up with three regular and three high boys. Which yeah. is one additional high boy. I think we should have, yes. At least. That would be five. And we also satisfy the requirement in the men's room? Yes, well, that's up to the guys. I'm just speaking for the women. I don't. Well, you've got to speak for the whole process. So you represent both men and women. So. Okay, that works for me. So we'd have two additional toilets or an additional $500. That's correct. Ginger, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Then I would propose to amend my motion uh, to spend the 194, excuse me, the $194,825 and the additional cost for adding two or more high boys to the project. I second the amendment. We have to vote on the amendment yep. before we vote on the motion. Any objection? Okay, any further discussion? Are we opening that up to the floor or not? I mean, to the other people or not? You can if you want. I'm just thinking, if you open it up to the residents that live here, because they're the ones that you know, we're all paying for the project. So. Judge, you want to ask if there's any questions? If there's any questions, press star six to unmute. This will ultimately move to a member state. Yeah, so I to be Tom, I get to go stream. President here? No, no. I think so. Okay. Hi, Tom. Yeah, I, I've talked with several of the residents in my association, both male and female, and the feedback that I have gotten from them is that uh, adding the tall boys to the restroom in the locker rooms there is a good idea. Good. Okay, good. Thank you. I think it is. So we're good. Any other comments? Then I will take a vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ginger, you have the permission. The only thing which we would require of you is to be able to review the contract before the process starts. Okay. And then um, I believe you gave Bill Rob the uh, agreement between the owner and the uh, contract review. Are there any changes? I don't know. You'll have to ask Bill. You can ask him after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all the board. Thank you, Thank you, Ginger. Before we get into Goodwill, uh, we received a message that uh, from Del Dewar that she tried to get recognized and couldn't. Uh, Del, are you still on the phone? And please star six to unmute yourself. Del? I assume Nell may have left, but then if you speak to her, let her know that we tried to reach her. She wanted to make a comment. Uh -oh. Jack? Yes? That's been true, I guess, for one. Uh, 
to the men's room, so. Thank you for that. You are welcome. So, seeing Dell is not on the phone, which kind of disappoints me because I know she wanted to talk. Uh, we will go to good and welfare. Anyone who has any good or welfare comments, if you would star six to unmute your phone, we'd be glad to listen to or hear any good and welfare announcements. I have wonderful announcements. Am I permitted to speak during this time? Mm -hmm. You are permitted to speak as long as you come over here. <laughs> for the good welfare of the community. As you probably are aware, the Federation documents prescribe that uh, Robert's Rules of Order apply as parliamentary procedure, but that's Robert's Rules of Order latest edition. And I imagine most of the association's documents uh, require the same thing. The first edition of Robert's Rules, and Rules of Order came out in 1876, 144 years ago. The latest edition came out two weeks ago, and it's edition number 12. And I have secured a copy of Robert's <laughs> Rules of Order 12th edition. Signed by Robert. Well, Robert has since passed this mortal coil. Uh, in any event, I would like to present this 12th edition of Robert's Rules of Order to the board. Uh, who knows? It might come in handy someday. Right, I'm coming handy today. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. I have some reading material. Yeah, though. it's only uh, 600 pages. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for that donation. Yeah. Really appreciate it very much. We don't know what we would do without you. <laughs> Are there any other uh, goodwill announcements? Not hearing any, I'll take entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Any objection? Nope. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for those who attended the call. We appreciate it. And have a safe and happy Labor Day weekend. Be safe, everybody. Hey, Steve McGuire, could you mute your phone? Vice President Massame. Physically present. Secretary Piquet, present. Treasurer Pond, 